I'm going to talk to you today about uh, liquid biofuels in particular. So you've heard a lot about the electrification at this show today, but I'm going to talk to you about the, the other options. And what are the main challenges and opportunities that um, come about from these, from these fuels? So I work at Aston University. Uh, I'm based at the European Bioenergy Research Institute. So we do lots of things related to bioenergy. Um, so we specialise in advanced biomass conversion techniques. Uh, so that's in to create energy, so in the form of heat and power. But we also look at all sorts of biofuels, biochemicals, so anything that you can make from re renewable materials. So what we try and do is we try and take things from the research stage, so from small scale in the lab, and then we work with industry wherever possible to develop it through technology to pilot plants and then to industrial applications. So we're all about trying to integrate the research that we do in academia uh, to try and make these have real world applications. So we do do things uh, about uh, electrification at Ebury. Uh, so we're involved with the Ithaca project. Uh, so we're a growing demonstrator site for district energy systems and also for smart grid applications. We've actually had a, a successful spin-out company uh, to do with smart grids uh, called Grid Edge. Uh, so at Ebury we have an on-site gasification and CHP generation, which means that we can heat and power our own building, but also other buildings within the university. We're connected to the Birmingham District Heating Network, and we also have a vehicle-to-grid fast charging station as well. So we're involved in the, in the electric vehicle research. But apart from that, I'm going to talk to you about low-carbon liquid fuels today. So why do we still need these? We know that we're making huge developments in electrification, but we still are going to need those uh, low carbon liquid fuels in the short to medium term for heavy goods vehicles, for heavy duty high energy vehicles, so for construction vehicles, quarry vehicles. Uh, we're also seeing increasing transport energy demands, not just from uh, cars and trucks, but also from shipping and aviation. So there's still gonna be a pressure from those guys uh, for, for liquid fuels. We also need these to meet the Paris Agreement. So we've made a commitment to reduce our carbon emissions, to try and reduce the, the global warming situation. And in order to do that, it's going to rely on us moving towards uh, low carbon liquid biofuels, as, as well as moving towards electrification. So the fuels I'm going to talk to you about today, these do not come from food crops. Uh, this, is all, this is all research that's based on looking at uh, biomass and wastes. So residues aren't normally used in the food industry, so that can be left over from agriculture, it can be left over from forestry, we can also uh, convert things left over from breweries, so what we call the spent grains, uh, and we can also make use of waste and residue. So there's a lot of work going on at the moment in looking at what we can do with the stuff that you put out with your bin bags. So we're looking at trying to convert that into valuable uh, liquid biofuels as well. So we definitely need them. The reason why we need them is, uh, is mainly because of this. Uh, so this is the latest information from Bayes, so the Digest of UK Energy st Statistics. So this shows that uh, we're still using a lot of oil in the UK. So two thirds of our oil usage in the UK is, is used for transport. Uh, we've seen a dramatic increase uh, in air travel, so 3.5% increase in the use of oil for air travel over the past, for, between 2016 and 2017. So this is a, so there definitely needs to be something done about that. And we can see that a huge amount of that oil that we use is still used for car travel. So although electrification is part of the solution, we still need to think about those um, liquid biofuels. In the UK, what do we do with all of those fuels? Out of the million tonnes of oil equivalent fuels that we use in the UK per year, 47.8% of that is petroleum. Then we have 28.6% of that is uh, natural gas. The amount of biofuels that we're actually using in the UK at the moment is comparatively small, so we're only using 4.1% uh, biofuels. So we really have got a lot of scope for improvement, a lot of scope for reducing our carbon emissions. So what does the UK bioenergy situation look like? Um, so I've been doing some work with a big project called the Supergen project, which I'll introduce at the end. And this is how we see the evolution of UK bioenergy. 
So in the near term, um, we're looking at flexible heat and power. So we're already seeing that. There's been a dramatic reduction in the amount of fossil fuels that we're using uh, for the generation of heat and power. Um, so there was 12 million tonnes reduction in the CO2 emissions between 2016 and 2017 and 2017, so that's a 3.4% reduction. So a huge reduction from moving away from fossil fuels in heat and power. So we've, we're, we're already uh, making good progress there. But in the med medium term, we're still gonna need those fungible hydrocarbons. So to do that, we're going to, to need to improve uh, technologies such as catalysis. So this is where we use chemistry to try and improve the yields of, of fuels that we get from those biomass and waste materials. We need to improve our pretreatment te technologies because some of them are dealing with waste is, is quite tricky. Uh, and we need to improve our yield. So uh, that's where a lot of research is happening at the moment. And in the long term, we know that we're going to move towards those gaseous vectors. We're going to move towards uh, technologies such as gasification, which is the thermochemical conversion of the biomass, uh, AD, which is anaerobic digestion, which gives you biogas, and then moving forward, even looking at hydrogen. And when we get to that stage, that's when we're going to start looking at negative emissions. So that will really help us reduce our, our carbon emissions. So this is where we see things happening over the next few years. So we do still need to do quite a lot of work on those uh, hydrocarbon fuels. And this is where we've got a huge challenge, but also a huge opportunity. So this slide here um, just shows the kind of feedstocks that we can use uh, from the biomass, biomass and waste sector. So we've got oil crops, sugar and starchy crops. Uh, we've got lignocellulosic biomass. Uh, then we've got biodegradable organics. So that's all the organic material that you put out in your, in your bin bag, so the, the food waste. Uh, and photosynthetic microorganisms. So lots and lots of different feedstocks. But this is where we've got a big challenge because there are so many different options. There are so many different ways in which we can convert these into our heat and power, into our liquid fuels, and into our gaseous fuels. So this is where there's a big challenge. How do we know which one's best? But it's also a massive opportunity because there are so many options. Uh, we've got the scope to try lots of different routes in order to help us achieve our aims. So for the projects that I've been working on, we couldn't look at all of these. It would be impossible. There's only me. There's one person. So we have to, we have to narrow down the scope to look at which one should we really focus on. So I've recently, uh, with some colleagues at Manchester and Cranfield, just completed a project uh, in collaboration with uh, the DFT uh, on, on transport biofuels. And they're particularly interested in aviation fuels and, and fuels for heavy goods vehicles. And what we actually did to try and work out, okay, so what are the policy makers interested in? What routes are they particularly interested in for us to look at? So we held a workshop uh, with lots of people. There were people from British Airways, from Bayes, from a Committee on Climate Change, so researchers. And we actually asked their opinion. We said, okay, what routes do you are, are most interest to you? And these are the ones that came out. So the full routes that we studied for this project were fermentation, so that's where we can take the organic materials or, bio, or the other biomasses and you ferment it, so like when you uh, ferment your beer or wine, and you end up with ethanol or butanol. So that's, uh, that's one of the routes that we're interested in. Then we have gasification, uh, so that's a thermal route. So we actually, uh, in effect, combust uh, the, the materials but, but not, in the, not with all the oxygen it needs in order to do combustion. So you end up with a, a special gas called syngas, and then you can turn that into synthetic diesel or synthetic jet fuel. So those fuels uh, mimic hydrocarbon fuels completely. So in terms of the end user, they wouldn't see any difference. Um, so that's, that's where we want to get to, where we can just plug, drop those straight into, into the systems. And then we have ethanol upgrading. So this is where you go through the fermentation route uh, to get your ethanol. And then you can upgrade that as well to synthetic jet fuel. So these are the ones that are of, of particular interest uh, to the DFT and the other stakeholders that, that we've spoken to. Um, so if you're interested in the results of that project, it's going to be published shortly. And that included um, looking at the availability of feedstock in the UK and then a techno-economic study of, of those routes to say whether they are economically feasible. So what sort of, what sort of money were you likely to make on it? Because these people aren't going to build these plants if they're not going to make any money. It also then helps the policymakers see what level of um, 
subsidies are required in order to make these profitable. So there are still a lot of key challenges in making these uh, liquid biofuels a reality. So we need to have better demonstration of resource efficiency. So that's the efficiency in terms of uh, harvesting those crops or getting that biomass and waste from the, from the area and then turning those into the, the biofuel. So we need to improve the efficiency of that and improve the economics and costs of doing that. Uh, the resource availability is an issue. Uh, Biomass and waste availability is very regional. Uh, so you can imagine around the cities, you'll find that there's a lot of MSW available, the municipal solid waste. And then in the country regions, you've got a lot of forestry residues and agricultural residues. So this is going to be based, this is going to be, um, we're going to have to look very carefully at resource availability in the regions around the UK in order to find the best solutions for particular regions. There's also a challenge in terms of fuel quality expectations and standards. It's not just as easy as just making some ethanol and then you can just put it into any old car. There are lots of different standards for fuels. Uh, so there are standards that, that the engine manufacturers abide by. And in order for uh, biofuels to become a, re a reality, we also need to meet those fuel standards and, ex and expectations. So a big challenge there in terms of standardization. And then in order to... Uh, make these things a reality. So in order to move from research stage all the way through to industrial ac applications, we really need to have some financing options available to people. People aren't going to take the risk if they're not going to have the, the money available in order to do that. So there are a lot of challenges, but there are also a lot of opportunities. You can see that there's so many different routes that people are researching and investigating in academia and in other research institutes. So there's a massive opportunity for collaboration between industry and research in organisations. So us guys in academia, we want to talk to you guys out there in the, man the manufacturing world who are interested in this. We want to talk to engine manufacturers about specifications. We want to talk about what you want from a fuel. Uh, so there's a huge, uh, huge opportunity there. So there's also applications within a regional cluster. So it's, it's a good opportunity for local councils to look at their particular waste problems or their particular biomass problems and create regional clusters and regional solutions. Uh, you can also produce valuable co-products. So as well as the fuels, quite often you produce other valuable uh, chemicals that, that have quite a high value. So that can add to the, to the margins that you get from these fuels. Of course, it reduces waste, it improves greenhouse gas emissions, it helps us achieve our, uh, uh, our, our contribution towards the, the Paris Agreement, so it helps us with that. And it also, for the UK, gives us new sectors for investment and business growth, so lots of opportunities there. So what are we doing about this in the UK? Um, so this is a, a really large project that's just about to start uh, that I'm involved with. So there's a huge project called Supergen Bioenergy, which is all about bioenergy research. Uh, so it's all about transforming the biomass and the resources. So we look at where are those resources available. All of those challenges that I spoke about, we're trying to um, find a solution for within this project. So we look, we're create, doing lots of cross-cutting activities in terms of sustainability. We want to look at policy, economics, energy systems integration. So not just about the fuels and chemicals, we're looking at those other energy vectors as well, the gaseous vectors. Uh, and we want everyone to get involved. So we want a lot of community, we want a lot of public and policy engagement from people like you. So if you're interested in being involved in this project, uh, come along to any of the events. You can tell us what are the main challenges. You can tell us, you can find out about our research and help us uh, make this become real. Uh, then please take a look at the website. It's free for people to sign up to. Uh, so, yeah, that starts in November 2018 and runs until November 2022. So that's it from me. Um, I didn't go too sciencey. If anyone wants to talk to me about science, the science behind it and the chemical conversion routes, then please do. But I thought I'd keep it not too sciencey so you didn't all fall asleep after lunch. So thank you very much.